Oh, yeah, yeah, there's the uh, awesome flower. Shakate. He <laughs> Shakate is another flower of awesomeness. <laughs> Helping out. That's the center dot at the center. It's gold for compassion, the complexion of the goddess whose embodiment is compassion. So I was just saying that the Shingmadev, the half lion, half man incarnation, and right at the end there was that little boy, Prahlad, that he was full of bhakti, full of love, so full of love and compassion when Vishnu in this form of Nishingadev asked him, what do you want? He just said, I want to come back life after life and tell others about your glories and come back you know, to the material world, birth and death over and over just to sing the glories of the Lord to the fallen conditioned souls. And that choked me up because I couldn't, you know, it's, that's a lot of bhakti to have that much devotion. It should stir the eternal parts of us. So until we get the, the best, eternal, deepest parts of us stirred up in the heart, there's a lot of stuff goes on here. A lot of philosophies, a lot of thinking, a lot of male-dominated religions, you know, bringing it down through time. But they don't come to the heart and reach out to humanity, to the left, to the right, and have a brotherhood, sisterhood of humankind. And that's what the, the, the feminine energy does, and that's what the holy name does. I meet a lot of people who are like spirit sprouts. You know, they're just like, very innocent, kind of shooting way up. And they need something to grab on, something that will uh, give them structure and help them build a foundation. Otherwise, you know, the wind might blow you away. This is, uh, these are meditation beads. And there's something called a vrata, which is a vow. And I try to get people to take a vow to at least do one round a day on the meditation. To understand uh, the importance of meditating on beads, we're going to go through and meditate on some quotes from the various scriptures about the holy name. And whatever we got here, we got several uh, representations. So uh, we're just going to read them and everyone who's out there can, this is, this is very mind expanding. So uh, please read with us. Uh, Thou, Hari, knowest and pervadest all. Murmur, O soul, the name of Hari, and sins will disappear. Let them pray. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Now this is an open blanket uh, statement. It covers all places and times that it shall come to pass. I will bring forth in shining light those who have loved my name and and I will seat each on the throne of his honor. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. I like that one there a lot. Blessed is the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Blessed is the person who utterly surrenders his soul for the name of Yahweh, to dwell therein and to establish therein its throne of glory. Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people, make mention that His name is exalted. Magnify His name and give glory to Him with the voice of your lips and with the canticles of your mouths and with harps. By chanting, this is from Vedic, from India, simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, we can obtain freedom from material existence. Indeed, by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, we can see the lotus feet of the Lord. As the rising sun immediately dissipates all the world's darkness, which is deep like an ocean, so the holy name of the Lord, if chanted once without offenses, can dissipate all the reactions of sinful life. As fire burns dry grass to ashes, so the holy name of the Lord, whether chanted knowingly or unknowingly, burns to ashes without fail all the reactions of one's sinful activities. The holy name of Krishna is transcendentally blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions, for it is Krishna Himself, the reservoir of pleasure. There is nothing except the holy name within all the fourteen worlds. 
In this age of Kali, there is no other religious principle than chanting the holy name. That is the essence of all Vedic hymns and the purport of all scriptures. The holy name of Krishna is the sweetest nectar. It is my very life and only treasure. If one chants the holy name of the Lord, even in a helpless condition or without desiring to do so, all the reactions of his sinful life depart, just as when a lion roars and all the small animals flee in fear. Chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name of the Lord. In this age of quarrel, Kali Yuga, there is no other way, no other way, no other way to attain spiritual enlightenment. And there's some great quotes in the Islamic tradition. Uh, bless the Prophet. The hour of death will not surprise one who saith, Allah, Allah. Glorify the name of the Lord, the Most High. So remember the name of the Lord and devote thyself with a complete devotion. Allah, who does not fit into heaven or worlds, fits into the heart of men. The process used to cleanse the heart is zikr Allah. Zikr is the key to the secrets of life. I once asked the Prophet, Messenger of God, show me the shortest road which leads to paradise, the one most pleasing to the Lord and the one best suited to his worshippers. The Prophet replied, O oh, Ali, this way is to repeat without ceasing the name of God in seclusion. So meritorious is this practice that the world would not come to an end until no one on earth any longer performs it. This is a very great quote. It, sh it says, show me the shortest road to the kingdom of God, to paradise, the one most pleasing to the Lord, and the one best suited for his worshipers. So that's just nice. A man said, O oh, prophet of God, truly the laws of Islam are numerous. Tell me of the one thing through which I can obtain reward. The Prophet replied, Let thy tongue be always moist with the remembrance of Allah. It is in pronouncing thy name that I must die and live. Muhammad. Christian tradition says, Hallowed be thy name. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Truly blessed is he who unceasingly pronounces in his heart the name of Jesus and who in the depth of his mind is united to the Jesus prayer as the body to the surrounding air and as wax to the flame. And the Lord God has spoken it, and honor and power and glory be rendered to his holy name, both now and forever. And in Buddhism, there is enough power in the Nimbutsu, name of Buddha, even if pronounced but once, to destroy all the sins whose effects have persisted through 80 billions of countless eons. All who sincerely call upon my name will come to me after death, and I will take them to paradise. Only repeat the name of Amida with all your heart, whether walking or standing, sitting or lying. Never cease the practice of it, even for a moment. This is the very work which unflinchingly issues in salvation, for it is in accordance with the original vow of that Buddha. In fact, even though he be a non-believer in Buddhism itself, he will certainly attain enlightenment by merely repeating the Nimbutsu ten times, or even once, because of the mighty power in those six mystical symbols. Really important. It's an analogy of, um, of uh, you know, catching a fairy at, before dark. And so the darkness is like, the setting of the sun is like the end of life, and the fairy is the holy name of Buddha, or the holy name of the Great Spirit, as you will. So, at last we have now been brought face to face with Amida and his original vow, and are like men longing to cross a stream who have found a fairy. As, alas, how, as however, we reflect upon the passing of the days and nights and how quickly we are drawing near to the land of shadows, we must make haste and seek deliverance with all our hearts, and forsaking everything else, earnestly lift up our voices and invoke the sacred name. Otherwise, our golden opportunity will have passed, and nothing be left us but remorse. Thank you for putting up with me. So every tradition has meditation beads. And if you don't have beads, you can... Go outside, you can pick up a rock, you can even walk with a crystal, whatever you can get the tactile sense of touch. Whatever you call it, this is the process of self-realization for this dark age that we live in.